good evening friends i'm hanifa working here at dbg today we are going to discuss knockout js in detail before that we need to make sure we have two previous sessions in the last two months you all know about that session because it's a continuous session as my colleague said it's a third among that series front end series so let's go back to the previous session and just check what we discussed on that sessions yeah okay this is the uh, 13th edition of coffee at dbg we discuss the this myths and facts about jscript in this session we had a question that is that javascript is a buggy language and we concluded that it is not we we are seeing bugs when using javascript because it is the fault of different render engine of browsers it is not the fault of javascript different browsers render javascript differently so we write we need to write script for all the browsers you need to check that all browsers that is the reason we are seeing bugs in javascript it is not the problem of javascript that we concluded in that session first so we uh, discuss the author of javascript you can see the photo brendan h and we discuss the higher level architecture of browser interface and all those things included that and we discuss what is easting me authority who standardize javascript ECMA. ECMA. Yeah, ECMA script. Actually, the JavaScript that we use right now is based on ECMA script. ECMA script is the standard that is followed by JavaScript, JScript, and Action Script. And uh, for the new guys over there, that is on that day what we were discussing, like how Brendan H came up with a script, and it was called Mocha initially, and then it was named as Live Script, and it, he was working in Netscape Navigator. And at that time, Netscape showed up, and uh, IE, IE and Netscape were the major competitors, and IE came up with JScript. But uh, these were not working across browsers. So later, they, these guys went to ECMA to standardize the JavaScript across all the browsers, and that is how the ECMA script came into existence. So that was something that we discussed on that day. Again. Okay, uh, and we discussed about different uh, JavaScript engines. As you can see, Spider Monkey, V8, Chakra, and also render engines, browser render engines. And we discussed the process of rendering JavaScript in the browser. You can see a process here: yeah. HTML and render tree, then layout, then painting. So uh, I just want to make sure that you are also aware of this. That is for the newcomers. Uh, so, uh, do you know the basic browser architecture, high level architecture, and what actually it have? So that is we talk about JavaScript engines, rendering engines, browser browser engine, etc. In the first session. So okay. uh, it is like that is a browser has a user interface that we see in front, and whatever we type in, it is passed to the browser engine, and browser engine. Pass it to the rendering engine. So, so the whatever HTML, JavaScript, CSS, etc. Pass to the rendering engine, and rendering engine how it works is like it pass the HTML. So, rendering engine gets a HTML, DOM, HTML, and all the DOM elements are there. For example, div, bigger div, small div, etc. Span, etc. All these DOM elements are rendered first. And it creates a rendering tree with all the DOM elements according to its hierarchy. Then it uses the CSS and it takes the dimension and makes sure that it is as per that dimension. Then it starts painting. So that is how the rendering engine works. And then there is a networking component for a browser that uh, handles all the HTTP requests and stuff like that. Then a JavaScript interpreter or a JavaScript engine 
that is the part which handle all the JavaScript parsing or uh, Java, uh, JavaScript rendering. And there are different JavaScript engine for different browsers. For example, for Mozilla, it is PyDomongi, Chrome, V8, Squirrelfish for Safari, and Chakra for IE. So these guys use ECMI standards to process this JavaScript. And uh, there will be bugs because each browser has different uh, DOM manipulation APIs. And these JavaScript libraries, these JavaScript engine talk with these DOM libraries. And if that API is buggy, it won't work perfectly on that browser. So that is the reason why we feel as if JavaScript is a buggy language and it is not consistent across different browsers. But it is a standard language. And that is something that we discussed on that day. OK. And uh, we discussed object programming practice in JavaScript. On the same, same day, we discussed that too. And we had a, a live code demo on Mr. Suresh is not here. Yes, take the session. And we found, uh, the session was the basement for this series. And, we looked, uh, and the next session, this is the last session we have covered for the front end series. And here we discuss about different JavaScript libraries. We are using JavaScript libraries. And do we really know the difference? Oh, I can ask a question. Can we compare with JS and jQuery? Is that comparable? We can put the and the processor. Which is the part of, which is the part of same system? But it has different purpose in its system. In the category base DOM library, but require JS is a module order. We have different purpose using different libraries. So we categorize that like this base DOM libraries, as I said, jQuery or product JS are one of the examples in full are in that category and this is with kids which is GPUI is one of the example in that section and this is we discuss like JS this is something this we want to implement in the front side then we use the type of libraries Motivators, I already said, requires something we need to load as upon the dependency. So, uh, we need there's module orders, then package managers and bit in the package managers. I just have an uh, example board.js, etc. These will be discussed and later we come with four major JavaScript framework Backbone, Ember, Knockout, and Nagula. We come with the features of each, this, each of this framework with, uh, using a parameter uh, like uh, data binding, how much each framework supports data binding. So um, at first, initially, uh, that is after discussing about uh, JavaScript, uh, that is uh, the evolution of JavaScript, then we discussed about, uh, that is, how to code on object-oriented JavaScript. Then we uh, came to the session where we are seeing a lot of JavaScript libraries in the online. But seeing that, uh, that is, we are getting always confused that where exactly to use these libraries. So we decided that. Okay, let's see how we can categorize into different sections or different types of libraries and identify and use it for a particular purpose. For example, based on libraries, those are the library, for uh, jQuery is an example for a based on libraries that provides first level of abstraction about the native JavaScript. And next one is like widget or UA toolkits. It, is, it belongs to a separate session. Widgets are something that serves for a particular purpose.
So you know uh, why we are using jQuery. But for building a calendar or a, a calendar, which we use a calendar widget, which is a ready to use type of stuff. So those type of widgets are called uh, UA widget or toolkits. So a toolkit is something that contains multiple widgets. For example, with some of the examples in jQuery uh, UA. Auto complete or auto complete is there, calendar is there, just like that. Then we uh, talked about uh, module orders, build tools, etc. And we came across the web app libraries or MV star frameworks or the, what we call as JavaScript frameworks. And we compared the Backbone JS, Ember, Knockout, and Angular just because they are the most popular ones and we uh, went through a short history on who is behind Ember so the guy who is doing the jQuery itself is behind the Ember and Angular JS is Google. from Google so no code is an it was done by an employee of Microsoft. Microsoft but it is not a Microsoft project so that type of comparison then we went through specific features for example data binding which all are the frameworks that support data binding and then yeah routing uh, dependency tracking routing routing etc in each features we compared these frameworks and we rated them we can use all of this framework which is much suitable for our project requirement it is based on our requirements that is that is what, what actually we want to use and uh, we have to select the frameworks just correct it Okay. Okay. So on that day, that is many people were telling like that is we got a baseline picture of these things. That is, if you had some code or uh, if you could help us in learning or doing a real demo of that, it will be helpful for us. That is, we can go back and start doing some code on any one of these frameworks. So most of them suggested as no code is something that is easy and quickly uh, that we can learn. And so we thought that okay, let's do the next session. With a live demo on knockout genus. Yeah. yeah. That 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 is for today. We are going to discuss that uh, knockout JS with a live demo, live code demo. So you will get to know the features as well as the syntax. You can start a project yourself from today. Okay, this is the agenda. The first part is discussing Discussing this knockout JS, we need to discuss something on design pattern because knockout js is an mvvm design pattern so what is this in we, we want to know what is design pattern as we include that in agenda to know the definition of knockout js and keep features with the demo a single page application using uh, demo uh, knockout js and less but not less that is extremely important because knockout is, has so many features missing by default. It is uh, s s getting done using these related libraries. So we'll discuss that too in the last session. This pattern. So people are discussing this. How many PHP programmers are here? Okay. So I have a question. Can you recollect your experience in your first project? That how did you write your code in your first project? How you uh, written that? I have a project that I have different HTML pages. In the HTML pages, I have included some files like header.php, connection.php. Remember sessions underscore step at the first slide. Then this type of include files for the connection.php, the previous connection in R. In the header, there we add the JavaScript things. Also the CSS, we start the style block. All this together, and PHP, HTML, all this together in an HTML page. That was the experience. Maybe this, uh, someone who started such experience, they might be using some framework initially. But we had such an experience, and 
After completing a project, we look back to the code. Even the author could not identify where we written the uh, part that we are seeing in the web page. At the scenario, we improved by including classes and methods. That is the next step of development. Uh, PHP uh, supports object-oriented programming, and we included class in class with the constructors and all public private access access identifiers we have used. But even though we are using the classes, we include that in the HTML file. And we go back to the a little bit improvement we have after using this class, but we are still on the same scenario because we are in an HTML page and we look at the code to identify a split. If you want to change a small thing, we have to look at the whole page. If it is a new developer, it is very much difficult to understand the coding structure. Later, we got an improvement in that type of coding. That is the arrival of framework. We use many frameworks. And that frameworks coded or developed in the way it supports a design pattern. Maybe the extra feature is uh, the extra feature added to that framework is separation of concern. Maybe you may heard about that word, separation of concern. What is a concern? A concern is nothing but a class or a business logic, or simply we can say a module, something separately we can identify in our code. That is separation of concern. This is what implemented in the design pattern. We can discuss some design pattern in detail, and we will get to know more about it. I already said. MVVM. Yeah. This is MVC. Maybe we can with the MVC, then MVVM. MVC, if you are using Zen framework, Zen 2, it is a lovely Zen MVC framework. So, it's going to the structure. Let's check how a web page works. When we are browsing from a web page, Suppose we have in a, we are using a contact page, contact us page, and we have different text boxes and a submit button. We type our name and email ID and some description and click submit button. It goes to the server. Some way it goes to the server, and on the server from the file it checks the business logic of the uh, project. Maybe they will send us a mail or maybe the content has been saved to database, or maybe saved to any file, etc. That works upon the business logic of that website. And we'll get a return message that your contact message has been sent, or your contact message has been saved. Like In that, we need to find that MVC structure. So there are different blocks works in that scenario. Because we are seeing a web page, text box button. That is what we called view. The user, what the user sees in front of him. That is view. And what is middle? It is the part that process our request from server side and do the business logic and data access operations. That is what the model. And countries middleman between this and view. Handle the request from view and serve that to the corresponding model and return the message, receive the message from model and return back to the view. This is the scenario working in MVC. We have, uh, I think this is clear. We are all familiar with this. And MVVM. From the letter itself, it is MVVM. We don't have four blocks in this session. We have only three, but it uh, it represents in four letters: model, view, and view model. View model is one block. As we said in the MVC, the controller replaced with the view model, but it is too different. From this picture itself, you can understand what is the view model. Maybe model is same as we discussed in the previous MVC structure that handles the 
business logic and data manipulation for the server, not for the UI. And UI is what we see in front of our browser, in front of our machine. That is what you are. And view model support view to maintain the state. Maybe I can explain a little bit more clear. That is, if you have a web page with a text box and an add button, and below that we have a grid to show the list of the added item. I first written my name and that. That is listed first. When we are changing this UA state, that can be noted by the browser, sorry, uh, the JavaScript. Th this listing can be done with the support of some JavaScript code. This can be written in view model. Simply, we can say that. We, we need to get some support from the JavaScript to show an instant message in our, brow in our web page. That can be achieved by using this view model. Is that clear? It is nothing but a JavaScript class. We are saying class, but it is a function. In JavaScript, you know, we don't have any class. So JavaScript function we return in a file to support view for the DOM manipulation. That is what view model. We have a detailed a single page application where we get more uh, clear about this view model because we have a view model in that application. So you will get uh, more clear about that. Yeah. This image may help you to understand a little bit more. Because here you can see the supporting JavaScript. That is a JSON data. That may be an XML or an array that coming from the database or data source view that we are seeing right now. MVV. There are many other design patterns like MVP, maybe MVW or uh, MVR that we heard about. We can, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, put some examples. I remember that. Uh, we have different examples. In JavaScript, we can say backbone or ember is an MVC. It's following MVC architecture. But not like our server-side program, programming like in, in Zend or uh, other Laravel or something like that. It is just following MVC architecture. For MVVM, we have different examples. One is knockout. And Angular is also now more like a MVVM. Maybe in the later news uh, that Angular is just like MVW, model view, whatever. They are uh, purpose in that design. MVVM, uh, Angular, we can use MVW pattern. And for MVP, we have Riot.js, that is another JavaScript library, which is in MVP. And uh, for MVVM, knockout, we have an example. Yeah. The next is, is our, this is our topic today, knockout.js. Before understanding knockout.js, we need to know we all are working with web project and we we are familiar with jQuery. What is jQuery doing in our project? What is the role of jQuery? Or what is the benefit of using jQuery? Can anyone tell? We can manipulate DOM element using native object. Then what is the difference? It, it is helping us to do that in an easy manner. Oh, we better say we can reduce the challenges. Maybe the best example is cross-browser compatibility. If you're writing some code in the native uh, script, we have to take care of all those things, the browser compatibility and all IE uh, uh, and uh, browser uh, F Firefox, and all we have to take care of. But we are using jQuery. jQuery will take care of that all things, and we don't worry about that. Just like jQuery, Knockout is providing another 
layer of abstraction, an advanced layer of abstraction over the JavaScript development. We will get more, uh, get to uh, to familiar with. We can get it done some features very easily. I'll give you an example. One of the feature of Knockout is data binding, two-way data binding. Just assuming a web page with a text box and a development at the right side. A text box and a development, nothing else. Then our recommend is just type something in the text box, it should be shown in the div instantly. That's our requirement. How can we accomplish that in jQuery or native JavaScript? We have to write some script on key press uh, of the text box, we have to write some method and uh, we have to access that development and write the code for that too, to show that instantly. But using knockout JS, we can do that in a simple way by introducing data bind, an attribute in knockout JS is data bind. We just add that attribute into text box. Data bind equal to some name. Maybe we can say first name. The text box is a first name, entering first name. So we just mentioned that data bind equal to first name. And for the div, we'll add an attribute data bind equal to first name. And from the view model, we'll just write one line code. This dot first name is equal to ko dot observable. This one line code will help us to instantly bind the data to this development. This is very simple feature of knockout JS. You will get to know more about knockout JS like dependency tracking, templating, automatic UI refresh in the later session that we have a code demo. I'm just giving you an introduction about knockout JS, what is it provides or what how does it help for us in our project? This is uh, Steve Sanderson, who was the author of Knockout JS. He was, uh, as we uh, already debut told, is a Microsoft employee. And uh, you have the Git repo and the details of this framework here. This key features, I already discussed this one. Automatic UI refresh will be in the next section. Data binding, I just give you an intro about that. Dependency tracking also we'll discuss in the next slide that my colleagues are ready for that. And then browser support. We are very happy that this framework supports this much browsers even though that IE 6 plus, so we don't have to worry about that. That's it from my side. And uh, if you have any question related to this, please ask.